Thank you to everyone for being here today to listen to this presentation and for the opportunity to present. Uh, great, so I have no uh, conflicts of interest to disclose. As you all know, laparoscopic surgery has become the standard of care in high-income countries for the appropriate operations, but it remains underutilized in low- and middle-income countries. It's become the standard of care for its many advantages in certain surgeries, including reduced length of stay, fewer complications such as surgical site infections, and reduced need for pain medication. These advantages could be particularly important in areas that are resource constrained. However, its implementation has encountered many barriers in low and middle income countries. These barriers include high startup equipment costs, low maintenance capacity, and inadequate training of both surgeons and perioperative staff. Bolivia is a lower middle income country in South America, and Santa Cruz is a city in eastern Bolivia where Emory Global Surgery residents have worked with collaborators for the past several years. Laparoscopic surgery has been available in Bolivia since the 1990s, but it remains only partially adopted. An informal, surgery, uh, an informal survey by Emory residents in 2018 indicated that in tertiary care hospitals in this major city, Santa Cruz, uh, only about 50% of appendectomies were being performed laparoscopically, and hospitals ranged significantly from 40 to 90% of uh, cholecystectomies being performed laparoscopically. With this in mind, Emory residents partnered with Bolivian surgeons to offer in-person um, basic skills courses in 2019. Of course, unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, these in-person courses had to be put on hold. We therefore pivoted to two virtual courses that were offered in fall of 2020. Each of these courses lasted eight weeks with meeting weekly for a two-hour class. The course was developed by two Bolivian pediatric surgeons as well as a minimally invasive surgeon from Emory University. During our weekly classes, one hour would be dedicated to didactics while the second hour would be dedicated to skills and discussion. We also had WhatsApp small groups pairing uh, one attending surgeon with one of the Emory residents that were involved in the course. These small groups allowed for more personalized instruction and more personalized interaction. In addition to the didactics, we taught several skills, including object transfer, precision cutting, and intra and extracorporeal knot tying. Here you can see the participant demographics across both iterations of the course. We had 24 total participants representing eight hospitals in the Santa Cruz area. About half of our participants were uh, residents and about half were attendings. 50% almost never or never used laparoscopic surgery. And about 80 over 80% did have access to a box trainer, uh, usually shared box trainers in the hospitals in which they worked. Uh, for those who didn't have access to a box trainer, one of our attendings, Dr. Rojas, presented a method for creating a portable trainer that would use just your smartphone or a tablet instead of requiring a computer monitor in order to create and uh, uh, in order to monitor your laparoscopic skills. We asked our participants to indicate their level of confidence in certain laparoscopic skills, both uh, in their registration for the course as well as in post-course anonymous surveys. As you can see, significantly more participants indicated moderate to high levels of confidence in five of the six areas assessed. We also assessed laparoscopic knowledge using multiple choice pre and post course uh, uh, tests. As you can see, we had significant improvement in our post course scores, uh, increasing to 77% from 68%. In order to evaluate actual technical performance, we asked our participants to submit four videos, one of each skill at the beginning of the course and four videos at the end of each course. During the first iteration of the course, we encountered significant uh, barriers to this and were therefore unable to objectively evaluate the, the videos that were submitted. The barriers included problems with internet access, issues with actual submitting the, course, the, the videos onto Drive, and most often non-standard equipment that was used. As you can see, many of our participants used handmade materials, um, which made it more difficult to objectively evaluate. Therefore, we pivoted for our second group. We allowed our participants to take uh, the videos directly in WhatsApp and submit directly in WhatsApp. 
We also emphasized the preferred materials that we wanted them to use, but included materials that we knew that they would have access to. And we adjusted our rubrics to account for these changes in materials. With that, objective evaluation of the laparoscopic skills was possible. As you can see, we had significant improvements in intracorporeal knot tying and precision cutting. We also had an overall skill score. This was a combination score of all of the points for each individual score. As you can see, this overall skill score also improved. So in conclusion, we had a Bolivian-US collaboration that successfully offered two multi-week virtual laparoscopy Sur laparosco laparoscopic surgery training courses um, to Bolivian surgeons and trainees. These courses showed improvements in confidence, knowledge, and technical skills. This was not only offered in a lower resource setting, but it was also offered during a global pandemic. The challenges that we encountered with video evaluation and access to training resources are ones that we will continue to work on and overcome. However, we look forward to continuing this type of course generally, moving towards a train the trainers model in order to uh, improve the course sustainability. We also hope to start including some of the intermediate to advanced skills using ex vivo or in vivo models. And we look forward to eventually have, um, moving towards a standardized program for all Bolivian surgical trainees. And thank you.